What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Chill, where I, Graham, Jesus, and Matthews break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network. And today we're talking the latest episode of WWE Break It Down, featuring none other than the dead man himself, The Undertaker, who actually just had his final farewell, as we were told, at Survivor Series last night. So it's been about two and a half months since they did one of these episodes, and I always enjoy them. It basically features the superstars sitting down. Um, I don't want to say re-watching their old matches, but discussing old matches while they show clips of them. That would be WWE Playback. They actually just did one of those on the WWE YouTube channel earlier on in the week before Survivor Series with Ray and Dominic sitting down to rewatch Ray and Brock Lesnar from last year's Survivor Series. Now, this one just features Taker just sitting down, talking about his old matches. Um, this one they talked about, I think... Four? No, five different matches, actually, in about a 15-minute period. There's been, obviously, a ton of Taker content on the WWE Network this month, a lot of which I've reviewed already, um, some of which still to come. For example, they had the Brothers of Destruction documentary last week, which was fantastic. Talked about that earlier on this week. They had the Paul Bearer, the Mortician special from, I think, not last week, but the week before that. Reviewed that. That was great. The WWE Untold episode on Taker vs. Randy Orton. That was fantastic as well. And now this past weekend, they had Break It Down on Friday with Taker. Saturday, not Taker-related, but A Chronicle on Lana. Um, I'll be reviewing that for tomorrow here on the channel. And then on Wednesday, which went up on Survivor Series Sunday, one more round, Broken Skull Sessions, The Undertaker, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. So that review should be going up on Wednesday before hashtag AskGSM for anyone wondering on that front. But yeah, this was very good. The first match they broke down was Taker versus Triple H from Shotgun Saturday night, February 8th, 1997. Now, I will say this right off the bat. I've said this before. With this show, which I like, they don't break down the most obvious matches you can think of. They take kind of like, not peculiar matches, but like matches you wouldn't ordinarily think of. Or like the match in a series of matches, like... For example, if you told me they were talking about Taker and Triple H on the show, I would think WrestleMania 17 or WrestleMania 25 or WrestleMania whatever, or WrestleMania 27 or 28 rather. No, they talk about one of their very first meetings back in 97 on February 8th um, in, in 97 on Shotgun Saturday Night, which is pretty cool. So obviously it took place at Penn Station, a very famous match, a very famous show. Shotgun Saturday Night Taker said, used to pop up in different locations. And just to get to the ring, he had to go through a ocean of people, he said. They had to fight through this ocean of people. There were a lot of people there. This was back when wrestling was really, really, really popular. He recalls the tombstone on top of the escalator, which was a really cool moment. It was a really cool experience overall for him. And then he talks about the evolution of Triple H. And how he used to call him Fancy Pants earlier on in his career. And he uses Triple H as an example of someone who can transform themselves and experience this metamorphosis of sorts to really reinvent themselves and go far in the business. He calls his work ethic incredible. And he was an example of someone who wasn't content with where he was, which is a vital part of being a sports entertainer. Taker's words, not mine. And when you cease to grow, that's when you become obsolete. He then talks about himself versus Mankind in the Boiler Room Brawl. Again, not the famous Hell in the Cell match that we've heard a million times. He talks about the Boiler Room Brawl from SummerSlim 1996. It was a legit Boiler Room, if you couldn't already tell. Very dirty, very dusty. They used anything that wasn't tied down. A pretty physical match, Taker said. Uh, Mankind at one point threw hot coffee at Taker. And he didn't really elaborate on that. I was so I I was thinking he was gonna say, "Holy shit, that really hurt," or "I got some burns from that." Nope, he just said, "Mankind threw coffee on him," and then they moved on. So that was that. Um, that was the match where Paul Bearer turned on Taker after six years together, and that was what kind of kicked off the Mankind Paul Bearer era as a unit. And he knew that it would happen eventually. And he talked about this in the Paul Bearer documentary a couple of weeks ago, how he knew they would split up eventually. But at the time, he said there, and he said again here, he didn't think it was the right time, but it ended up working out for everyone involved. And um, he said they easily could have been together for another two years, in his opinion. But again, it worked out well. They reunited years later. It, it turned out okay, including for Mankind. So he actually admitted here that he only watches matches of himself back by himself so he can pick them apart. And that's what I guess he did here with this match. He said it's amazing what Foley was willing to put himself through. He was a very a big violence guy. Not violent, but violence guy. Like, he would put himself through a lot of pain. And as a result, between that dynamic and himself, The Undertaker, um, there were no limits as to what they could do to each other. Very physical, very painful match, but well worth it, he says. 
In a match I did not expect them to talk about, which they did, which was awesome, the triple threat match for the WWE Championship between himself, The Rock, and Kurt Angle from Vengeance 02, which I think a lot of people would say is one of the greatest triple threat matches of all time. It's a phenomenal triple threat. I would put it in the same company as Brock and Seth and Cena from Rumble 2015 and uh, Benoit, Triple H, and Shawn from WrestleMania 20. All three, I, I think that's the holy trinity of triple threat matches in this company. But what I thought was cool, they actually show they actually show Taker, Rock, and Angle doing the voiceovers for the opening of the show. Like, oh, tonight I will have vengeance, blah, blah, blah. The voiceovers they air at the beginning of each pay-per-view. They showed Rock, Kurt, and Taker doing it. And then Rock was doing it and like his phone went off and he joked about that, which I thought was really cool. So Taker said this was the last time that he actually had a chance to work against The Rock. They may have teamed together after that, but the last time they actually worked against each other. Um, he said he always had great chemistry with The Rock. He was always very easy to work with him, but the chemistry was really with Kurt Angle. And he praised the crowd that night. One of those incredible nights, he said, he lost the championship without getting pinned. He was the champion going in um, as The Rock walked away, still the ch or the new champion, rather. And that was the downfall of being a champion in the triple threat match. But yeah, he said that it was this weird thing where he always had the best chemistry with smaller guys as they kind of understood what it took to work with a bigger guy. And he knew that he was going to be, that it was going to be, or rather, Kurt Angle was going to be someone special after watching him for many months through the dark matches. Angle was one of those guys that got it immediately, just like that, you know? And he wasn't afraid to put himself out there. He grasped the business from day one, and they always had great matches together. It would have been cool to hear Taker's thoughts on No Way Out 06. They had an amazing match on that show. Probably, uh, I don't know if it was better than this match, but it was pretty darn good. And uh, still, I thought it was cool to hear him talk about Angle in that light here in this match. They then show himself versus Diesel, which I was not expecting, from WrestleMania 12, which I actually thought was a pretty good match and a very good show. I actually very much enjoy WrestleMania 12, and not just for the Iron Man match. There's not a lot of matches on that show due to the 60-minute Iron Man match in the main event, but it ended up being what I thought it was a very fun show in Canada. Or was it in Canada? I'm pretty sure it was in Canada. But anyway, so... That was It kind of got started, that feud between Taker and Diesel, during the um, Diesel versus Bret Hart feud. That was when Taker pulled Diesel through the ring, and uh, during the Steel Cage match with Bret, and Bret walked away as the new champion. He said it was very hard for two big guys, and still is, very hard for two big guys to have a really good match, because they always kind of do similar stuff, like big boots and whatever. But the whole point of that match was for, for Taker, he wanted to assert his dominance. And at that point, he was able to do a lot more with bigger guys because he had a lot less injuries, obviously. And um, it was it made, because, you know, they were two bigger guys, it made it that much more tougher of a challenge for him to get a good match out of him. But he knew that he was headed to WCW. Uh, Nash did, Diesel did. It was So it was very bittersweet because they had a good relationship. And not the fact that he went to WCW really changed that because they're still friends to this day. But business is business. And he did what was right for him. And uh, it didn't really matter that he was leaving, Taker said. They had a very good match. Diesel realized that he had what he had to do was put over Taker on the way out, and he was completely fine with that, Diesel was. So the last match they break down here is himself versus Kane from Unforgiven 1998, of course, the first ever Inferno match. And he said, you know, fire was an integral part of his character, Kane's character, so it only made sense. And it was all about who wanted to be, or who was going to be, the dominant brother. Of course, if you've ever seen an Inferno match or Ring of Fire match, whatever WWE's calling it nowadays, uh, we haven't seen one, I don't think, since Wyatt and Kane from SummerSlam 2013, which is probably for the best because it wasn't a very good match. But the whole objective of the match is to have uh, your opponent, to, to set your opponent on fire. That's the whole point of the match. And they took every safety precaution there was, but it was still very tough. You still had to be very much aware of where you were in the ring before they blew up the fucking flames and you went up in flames. You never really wanted to be too close to the ropes. And he revealed that it was very hard to breathe in there with the little oxygen they had, because the fire kind of takes up your oxygen. Two bigger guys got a lot of shit on them, specifically Kane with the mask. They're probably roasting in there, you know, that's what Taker said. It was very hard for them to breathe, but they had a very good match nonetheless. And he talked about how he would <laughs> he would ask Kane during the match, are you as fucking out as I am? Like, and it, it, Kane, it said, you know, it was okay for Taker. And I don't know about Kane. He didn't know about what, what Kane's thoughts in the match were. Um... But yeah, it was Kane was probably roasting in that mask. I, you have to imagine that he was. But he said it was a very interesting night of the office, and you know it worked out great, and it paid off. He's very proud of that match, and they thought he thought they both delivered. 
And that was it. Again, it's only a 15-minute episode of Break It Down, but I thought it was very good. Uh, Very cool to hear the dead man's insight in several matches throughout his career. Some matches that don't get talked about enough. And it made for a very good short, you know, short and sweet special right here on the WWE Network. So check it out right now. WWE Break It Down featuring The Undertaker. There's been a lot of other good ones with Ricochet, Seth Rollins, Trish Stratus, Sasha Banks, uh, Kevin Owens, among others. So check those out as well. You can check out my other WWE Break It Down reviews in the description box down below in the playlist entitled WWE Break It Down Reviews. Be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And we will be back tomorrow. We also had a Mandalorian review go up earlier in the day, so check that out as well. But yeah, we are having an, uh, two more videos go up tomorrow. It's been two videos a day for a while now. Um, so tomorrow I'm breaking down Raw Talk from tonight, which is airing tonight after Raw as well as the Chronicle on Lana, which went up on Saturday, which was actually very good. Had a chance to watch it, not review it yet. That's coming tomorrow. So take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'm Graham Gisa Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.